as you can tell by the title of today's episode, we've got a, a pretty cool one to share with you. We are on my new farm today, and I just recently closed on it and thought it'd be cool to kind of walk you through it, show you what I've been working on the past couple months, um, stuff like that. I, I actually got immediate possession the day I bought it. So fortunately from that aspect, I've been able to work on things and not get a, a real late start. I was able to get things planted and, and that type of stuff. And basically every, every hour I've had outside of the office, I've been here working on this, trying to get it ready. And uh, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. I wish I had a, a way to convey it to you. It's just, that's such a cool thing. I, I love land, I love land ownership. This is something that, you know, growing up, as I go, got older, I didn't think I'd ever be able to own land. You know, I always thought about it as a pipe dream, um, something like that. And obviously, you guys know I own the river farm. That was technically my first uh, purchase, but this one being solely owned feels a little bit more like my first. So I'm, I'm so excited about it. I love the, the potential of this piece and I'll get into why I really like this piece and to talk about kind of how it transpired. It, it happened pretty quick. I, n I wasn't really looking for land to buy per se. I always have my eye out on listings in the area and stuff like that. Even though even pieces I can't afford, I'm still looking at them. I, I like just kind of staying in the loop of what's selling, what's selling for, things like that. But I saw this listing pop up and I uh, thought it was kind of interesting and decided just to go walk it. Still didn't necessarily think uh, it would be a piece I would buy. It's, a, it's definitely a farm that if you just look at the aerial map, it's not super impressive. Uh, but that day, that first day I walked it, uh, when it was for sale, uh, I really, really liked what I saw in person. It was a completely different farm in person than it was on a map. And I ended up walking it a second time really thought hard about it and just I, I couldn't get over the potential I saw such a big opportunity on what this farm could be and so I got a hold of Mike asked if he'd be interested in buying you know my half of the river farm we worked out the logistics of that and fortunately I was able to get this farm bought uh, it's about a hundred acres so not a giant farm by any means but it's a, a good enough size to to work with to hold some deer potentially get some deer to the age class that I want to target, stuff like that. But I think the most intriguing thing about this property is the blank slate aspect of it. And I know we talk about that a lot. I think it probably gets overused a lot. Almost every property that's new to someone is a blank slate, especially from a hunting aspect. You can, you know, put stands and stuff wherever. It's all new to you, so it's blank slate. But this farm truly, I believe, is a blank slate. It was a cattle farm. Uh, before this, I, I have not found any sign of it being hunted before. No, no old tree stands, no food plots, no anything like that. And the amount of open area I have to work with in creating extra habitat, extra cover, extra food is really what creates that blank slate aspect for me. And of course, figuring out the whole hunting thing. So that is probably the one thing I love most about this farm and what ultimately decided or made me decide to sell the river farm and buy this is that aspect of creating something that wasn't there before and the unlimited potential of it. You know, looking back at the river farm, we we're fortunate enough that it was already a good hunting farm when we bought it. You know, it, it turned out to be a really good hunting farm. And we, of course, we did some small improvements, planted some some native grasses, put in more food, etc. Kind of fine-tuned the hunting. But due to like WRP regulations and and being completely flat river bottom land, there was only so much. There was a ceiling on what you could do. And you know, now that farm's more about just you know, fine tune the food, fine tuning the hunting. This farm, there are no regulations for the most part. You know, you can do what you want with it. And that part is, is exciting to me. I really love the work, the process, the journey of creating something. This farm actually reminds me a lot of one of the first kind of project farms I had. Um, if you remember the original project farm, you know, it had cattle on it uh, in a lot of different areas. And this reminds me a lot of that. 
And so I think this is going to be such a really, such a cool project to work on, watch it transform, try to turn it into a really good hunting property. Cause like I said, it's, it's so far from a turnkey hunting farm. And uh, again, that's what I like about it. I wouldn't necessarily have as much fun buying a turnkey hunting farm. This one's going to be fun to make it into a good hunting farm. I think it has all the potential in the world. It's a good area, but just the way this farm sets up, I think is, is really what makes the difference. So like I said, today I thought it'd be cool just to, to show you guys the property, almost like a little bit of a tour, uh, show some of the projects I've been working on and have coming up. Um, it's a really cool piece and again I wish I could convey how excited I am about this piece and the future of it um, But let's let's get to walking. I want to show you guys around So first and foremost this is uh, this farm has tillable acreage on it too. This is a big soybean field We got this planted literally two or three days after I first purchased the farm so it's nice to have some income on this property. That's first and foremost. But the thing I really like about this ag field, as you can see behind me, are the waterways. You know, the, the people that farmed it previously did a good job of just farming the best stuff. You know, not trying to get every single little inch of this farm. They kept nice wide waterways, uh, farm the best stuff and let the waterways grow up. A lot of times you see, you know, skinny little waterways that get mowed constantly. As you can see, there's trees growing up in the waterway and uh, obviously I like that from the perspective of deer cover but I think ahead about potentially enrolling this field into CRP and having those waterways the way they are uh, is going to create a lot of extra cover a lot of extra edge uh, some structure you know if you just have a sea of warm season grasses or CRP the deer bed in it but they really like the structure in and around it too so I think this makes it such a better field just for the simple fact that these waterways are really good throughout this field there's a number of nice wide waterways with trees growing up in them um, so rather than an entire field full of crp and grasses it's nice and broken up i really like that aspect i think that's going to encourage a lot more bedding out here if i do put this in crp So this is the only stand I've hung so far. I hung it a few weeks ago, but it was just in a cool spot. I had some time one day, I wanted to get it done. One thing about this property, it's, it's got all these trees that were actually planted uh, 26 years ago, I believe. And so a lot of these trees are in rows, and but 26 year old trees, mostly just oak, walnut, and maple, but there's no shortage of tree stand trees. They're all the perfect diameter, most of them are at this point. Perfect diameter, nice and straight. Um, but this one in particular, this oak tree kind of ended up in this little walnut grove here down by the creek. And so you have all these walnut groves that provide like wide open shooting lanes with one oak right at the back side of it. So good access coming down the hill right here. Tons of good shooting lanes. You'll notice in some of this, it gets a lot, it gets pretty thick. Those oak with all those lower branches and stuff. It take a lot of trimming for shooting lanes, but this one's wide open. It's a, kind of a pinch along the creek right here. So it kind of was a no-brainer spot and the spot I wanted to hang the first stand. Uh, but this is pretty cool having this one set up. I do want to go just for the fun of it. I'll show you guys a really cool pinch point um, right up the hill here. It's kind of a cool little cedar bedding pocket here. Bunch of cedars, you can see beds throughout really thick right through here. I just wanted to show you this spot for fun. So this is a killer pinch right here. The creek makes a big bend and it's, I mean, this pinch is like five yards wide and there's a perfect oak tree right here. It's so close though, it's almost too close, but I was thinking it'd be a really cool recur stand. Uh, you'd have like a seven yard shot to this trail. I, I've been running a camera on this trail and deer traveling through here almost every day. I mentioned that little cedar, we're just on the outside of the little cedar bedding pocket and this pinch and before it opens back up on this side, um, it's killer. It'll be a really cool spot once the bucks start cruising through here, checking these bedding areas. 
access is great. Um, I might make that a recurve only stand. We'll see. It, it just sets up perfectly for that. Clear a couple branches. You can see the deer coming. But man, it's just a killer pinch point right here. Another thing I did right away when I purchased it just because I was in the planning window was getting some food plot soybeans in as well. And I picked a couple couple spots to do it. I didn't do overly large grain plots uh, for a couple of reasons. One, as you guys know, I like to bow, bow hunt even during the late season. And so I'd rather keep the deer in a shorter range. This one is L-shaped and I got about 1.8 acres, I think, here. And the beans are looking pretty good. But the way it sets up, I think the a lot of the deer will come through this fence gap or work their way out in front of the blind. And then two, I also didn't want to just put uh, a bunch of food everywhere uh, this first year. I want to see a little bit more about how the deer use the property so I can kind of optimize that placement a little bit. So I did basically did this 1.8 acre and then I got another uh, acre and a half. Uh, right across the way here so hopefully enough food to last well into the season I'm going to supplement it with some green plots and I think it'll set up good from a hunting perspective this was kind of the no-brainer one I brought this redneck in right away planted the plot screen here kind of teed it so this access I'll show you when I get out but the access is killer right here even when you have a field full of deer in the late season good wind advantage here um, I love having the cedar tree right next to the blind just adds a little more cover a little more structure for the blind to sit up against uh, but this is a really cool spot and i'm sure we'll produce some some good hunts let me show you the access so you, you can see the plot screen i can't even see the beans right now the plot screen is serving its purpose of hiding me here but it's straight downhill drop right down here to the creek down here to the creek bed and you're out of sight so fast and this is the direction I'd be blowing my wind anyway so um, just killer access especially for a late season plot so I mentioned the plots being relatively small as far as the grain plots go so I did fence them in uh, just to allow the beans to get up and grow to maturity so that they're gonna produce food when the deer need the most adjacent to these beans that we we're just looking at I'm doing a little green or green plot uh, with a brassica blend and I planted it probably a week to 10 days ago and unfortunately we're just it's so hot and dry here we keep missing rains they fizzle out before they get here and so right now really the only growth is kind of in the shaded areas it's holding a little bit of moisture um, but I'm hoping if we can ever get rain this will be a really cool spot adjacent to this really gonna encourage the travel from one bedding block to the other through this low spot there's a lot of things coming together in this spot we just just need some rain mother nature to help us out but this will be this will be a dynamite spot for a camera as well as to hunt over so this is the other grain plot that I planted soybeans again uh, but this is on a pretty steep hillside going down my access will be from this side blow wind back over here but the cool thing about this one is you sneak in and out with this terrain advantage here but late season that's that whole block of timber is almost all south facing so really good bedding that time of year obviously but what's cool about hunting this spot you'll almost be able to come in on an afternoon hunt get up in here and you'll almost be able to watch the deer get up out of their bed and work their way to the food so it make for some some cool sits uh, watching that happen watch the deer come all the way I mean film them from the time they get up all the way to when they're in your field it's a kind of a unique setup being able to watch all that while also still being able to get out uh, in and out clean so this is what I was talking about this will kind of be the view that we'd have on a late season hunt here we imagine all of those all that timber right there when the leaves fall off you'll be able to see it see the deer come up out of that come down the hill and back up the hill into this field just kind of a unique setup We can see the beans where we just were behind us on that hillside. This is kind of an open area that I was trying to decide what to do with. Based on my axis and uh, just the way the farm lays out, I think it's better to keep the food more in the center and try to put more cover on the outside. 
and sometimes it's very dependent on the specific property. Sometimes you won't have the food on the outside, <clears throat> but it depends a lot on your access. Uh, so I ultimately elected to put the beans over there. And this was an area where I don't think the cattle had been in the last year or two. And so it has already started to uh, regenerate. You can see some small trees like this behind me coming up. And sometimes that old cattle pasture regeneration can be some killer deer cover. So I'm gonna kind of see how this grows up. I think this is a likely spot for me to maybe add some planted trees. Um, maybe add some some additional warm season grasses up here as well But I think this is a good connecting piece between that timber I was talking about that I have this all south facing and then some of the neighbors cover That's one of the things about this property, you know being a little bit smaller one of my main goals over the next you know a couple of years is to increase the holding capacity and Primarily going to do that through additional bedding cover. So this spot I'm going to try to add add cover to and let it grow up uh, to be pretty thick uh, keep the food back over here over my shoulder more in the middle of the farm I'm standing more or less in the center of that big south facing block of timber that I was talking about there's a lot of mature trees in this block a lot of mature walnuts uh, some oak sprinkled in on either side of me here but there's this kind of natural gap that flows down and turns right into those beans basically uh, and I sprayed this as you can tell I'm gonna plant clover here and this is a spot that's really hard to get into and so I'm, I'm not really planning it uh, to hunt per se but just to encourage bedding and deer being comfortable and spending time up here It'd be a really cool clover lane that kind of the deer follow down into the field and just to provide a, a little extra food up top here So we moved over to the other side and this is another plot that I'm going to be planting a little bit later. Uh, obviously I've got sprayed and ready to go. It's about three quarters of an acre. I'm going to do a green mix here. Uh, you see the plot screen around here to hide the access and kind of shield it from um, just outside visibility. Uh, but I'll show you kind of what I did to connect this plot to. Made a gap through here that leads out into this plot. This is the primary spot I'd want the deer to come in at. But my goal is to have clover leading out into the green. So this little natural opening is another spot I'm going to put some clover. And the creek comes around and bends, and I'll kind of show you that spot where we could potentially hunt it. So like I said, I came and cleaned all this out. Me and the guys cut out a bunch of just little locust trees and brush throughout here. Uh, but it was kind of a natural opening already. We just cleaned it up. But this is the spot I was talking about where the creek makes a big turn right here, real steep bank. Um, the deer get pinched down right here. And there's a really good looking walnut tree that I could sneak into with creek access, have good wind advantage. And, and whether the deer are going out to the main plot or not, this is still going to be a really good spot to hunt, this pinch coming off this creek. Uh, I could just see deer popping in and out of here pretty much all day long during the season. Obviously I talked about the plot screen surrounding, but right on the outside I had a little bit of miscanthus left from planting it on other properties earlier in the year. So I did plant a few rows here and you can see it's coming up pretty decent, uh, at least along this spot. Uh, hopefully that will eventually replace this, be the permanent screen, and I'll just you know plant the plot on that side. So this is a tree I had marked on Onyx when I first walked in here as a spot I wanted to stand. We're right off the creek, we're probably seven, eight yards off the creek, and the access is another key factor here where I can park my truck, drop down the creek, come up the creek right here and pop up the bank into this tree, and it's just a nice little travel corridor um, just on this side of the, of the creek. These 
plenty of trees make it pretty thick in here, but there's a lot of little uh, forced trails that come through here. But I'd say access is the number one factor. So I figure I'd get a, get a stand hung today as one more project knocked off the list. So I'm gonna get this knocked out quick and then I'll uh, wrap things up. Almost don't need sticks. One of the reasons I picked that stand, we're just around the corner right here and it thickens up a ton. There's a ton of young, young tree growth right here and multiple beds. And here's a pretty cool bed just under here. We we're just talking about it and Ben's like, it looks like a little tent. It, it does, it's got a canopy all the way around it. Deer just crawls up in there, kind of a cool looking bed, but um, coming right off of this thick bedding point, we're right on the outside of it with that stand we just hung. We're gonna wrap things up here. Um, got a few other things to knock out, but I just wanted to share the beginning of this story and give kind of a little property tour. And you know, one thing about this property I didn't mention yet, and I don't know how well it's gonna come through on the video, but this has the potential to be the most huntable property I've ever been on. You know, I've shared some of the challenges of you know, various properties I've hunted over the years and properties I helped manage uh, from a hunting standpoint just the different challenges, but the way this property lays out, the way the terrain rolls, the access points, the, the crazy amount of pinch points going through here, uh, make it, in my mind, without having hunting, uh, hunted it, of course, potentially the most huntable property. I think if the deer are here, they're gonna be very killable, and uh, that's pretty exciting. I think, you know, when you just need the deer to show up and, and have that confidence going into a hunt that they're likely to walk by, that's gonna make for some, some exciting uh, fall sit so just really excited about this property I know I keep saying that and it's just hard to convey I've enjoyed having these guys out here the interns and the guys I work with being a part of it and you know they'll get their chance to hunt out here as well it's just a place to have some fun but also a place that uh, I can put in a lot of sweat equity and and turn it into a turnkey hunting property um, that, and looking long term I don't know if this is a forever property for me I more likely see it as just that, you know, make it a, a couple year project, turn it into the best hunting property it can be, and then maybe move on to the next one, go find another project to work on, or maybe roll this into something bigger or something closer to home, whatever, you never know, but that's kind of how I'm looking at it right now. Just enjoy the process of improving this as a, as a whitetail property and uh, have fun along the way. So excited for the first hunts out here. We'll keep you guys posted on the storyline as the deer start showing up. We've had a, a couple deer, I've been running cameras for a little while now, we've had a, a couple decent bucks show up. Uh, nothing too crazy so far, but a couple that I would call mature. Um, but most of my properties are kind of reflecting that same thing. Most of the time, September's when it really starts to pick up. So can't wait to see how it plays out. Thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next week.